Hello and welcome. Good morning. We're so glad to be here worshiping the Lord together. So um, if you have the link for the service, why don't you just go ahead and share it with someone. Maybe you can put it on your WhatsApp status and uh, invite someone for the service. Okay, before we start, I um, just want to read a couple of scriptures uh, from Hebrews uh, chapter 13 and verse 15, which says, Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So all of us today, this morning, we are called, we are invited to give and bring the sacrifice and sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So uh, as we come, we, we bring the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to God. But more importantly, you know, than the songs and, uh, and the words that we bring and the thanksgiving, you know, we bring ourselves, uh, our bodies as a living sacrifice to him and just lay it down and say, Lord, we are yours. We want to worship you. We want to live consecrated lives and we want to give thanks to you. So uh, let's do that. Why don't you put your hands together and clap? With this heart open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring a sacrifice. With these hands lifted high, hear my song, hear my cry, I will bring a sacrifice. Oh yes, today I will bring a sacrifice I lay me down, I'm not my own I belong to you alone I lay me down, lay me down Whoa. And on my heart this much is true There's no life apart from down this morning it will be my joy to say your will your way it will be my joy to say your will your way it will be my joy to say your will your way always it will be my joy to say your will, your way. It will be my joy to say your will, your way. It 
it would be my joy to say your will, your way, always. It would be my joy to say your will, your way. It would be my joy to say your will, your way. It would be my joy. Bring these songs, O oh God, to say thanks, O oh God, to give thanks to you and to bring our lives, O oh God, as a living sacrifice, O oh God, which is our reasonable service, O oh God, to you, an awesome God, an all-powerful one. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Water you turn into wine And open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness to shine And open the eyes as we rise There's no one like you There's no one like you, none like you. Into the darkness you shine, oh, into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, none like you, God. None like you, so we sing and we declare, yeah. From everlasting to everlasting, He is God. Oh, He speaks and things come into existence. Oh yes, He touches and things come back to life. We're going to just praise Him and say, Oh God, this is who you are, Lord. And He is for us today. 
He is with us today. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand? And if our God is for us, and if our God is for us, then who could? Come on, lift your voice. If our God, one more time, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Yeah. Then what could stand against? Yeah. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, you are greater, you are stronger, and you are for us. You are with us, God. Oh, praise to our King. Praise to our King. Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, and if our God is for us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our come on, everyone, and what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is for us, then what could stand? the greater one God greater than the mountains that we face God oh things might seem overwhelming things might seem intimidating but our God is greater he is stronger even though things might come to overpower and overwhelm where well, my God is for me yes your God is with you and he's for you our God is stronger is greater oh, you are stronger you are greater than anything we might face today you are greater you are stronger than anything that we might face today you are greater you are stronger than anything we might face come on let's just sing it out you are greater you are stronger than anything we might face today oh, for you are with us and if you are with us then what then who can stand against oh greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world in the world greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world in the world our God is greater oh yes Lord you are stronger, God. Oh yes, there are battles to be fought and battles to be won, God. But you are with us. And you will lead us, oh God. And even at times, oh Father God, when God, our strength seems to be depleted, oh God, you are there with us. Because you're the victorious one. You're the victorious one, oh God.
Oh yes. In the thick of battle, he is God. When our strength is almost gone, he is God. These are the moments that we can lean on him because he is greater and he is stronger. And with him, we are more than conquerors. The battle rages on, feels like my hope is gone, but I will choose to look to you. I come as I am with no strength to stand and God I choose to lean on you and I'll stand in your victory your promises surrounding me I know you're by my side so I'll sing of your love for me your mercy, mercy, follow me, I know, I know you by my side. Yahweh, you are fighting for me, Yahweh, you're my sword and my shield, and all night, this is our battle cry. Yours is the power, yours is the glory, yours is the victory. Seems impossible to make the sun stand still, but miracles are what you do. Whoa, impossible is what you do. I'll stand in your victory Your promises surrounding me I know I know your side So I'll sing of your love for me Your grace and mercy follow me I know I know you by my side Yahweh fighting for me Yahweh You're my sword and my shield at all night This is our battle cry Yours is the power Yours is the glory yeah. Yours is the victory Lord, yours is the power, yours is the glory, O oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, God. No matter what I go through, the battle belongs to you. Come on, let's just sing it out, declare it. No matter what I go through, matter happens the battle belongs to you oh, no matter what I go through oh, yeah the battle belongs to you no matter what happens oh, no matter what I go through battle belongs to you so I stand so I'll stand in your victory your promises surrounding me I know you're by my side always forever so I'll sing of your love for me 
Your grace and mercy follow me, I know I know you find my side Yahweh, you are fighting for me Yahweh, you're my sword and my shield the power, yours is the glory, yours is the way, yours is the power, yours is the glory, yeah, yours is the power, yours is the victory, yours is the power, yours is the glory, yours is the power. Yours is the victory. Yeah. We worship you, oh, oh holy God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for ordaining this. Because you were the land that was slain before the foundations of the world were laid, oh God. And in you we have the victory. For you will lead us in a triumphant procession in Christ Jesus.
Father, we thank you so much that we could join our hearts together in prayer, in worship, that we could worship in spirit and in truth, right from wherever we are, God. And Father, we pray that even today on this service, 
as people connect and receive your word, receive time and spend this time together in prayer. We pray and ask, Father, that every life be touched, that every home, every family, every household be ministered to, Father. And Lord, we pray for the release of the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. We pray that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, God, that we may know you, that we may know the purpose to which you've called us, that we may know the rich inheritance you have for us as your people and the greatness of your power towards each of us. Father, I pray that in every household, in every individual's life, there will be miracles, there will be are the works of God, that there will be the blessing of God, the covenant blessing overshadowing our lives because we are your people. And I ask, Father, for mighty works to take place. Even as your word goes forth, let it bring freedom, let it bring release. Let the truth set your people free. And we thank you for your work in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, greetings and thank you so much for connecting uh, with this online service today. We appreciate all who connect to the service, those who are watching right now and those who may watch the service uh, at a later point in time. We greet you and we welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we also want to welcome those who may be connecting with us for the very first time. Uh, maybe you were invited by somebody. We welcome you. Uh, uh, we request you, if, you, if at all possible, at the end of the service, you can go to our church website, ap apcwo.org slash FTV. That stands for First Time Visitor. And you could share your details with us, your feedback, your comments, etc. And it'll be our joy to hear from you and also to connect back with you. And uh, if you're looking for a home church in our city of Bangalore, uh, we welcome you. You're welcome to come. Uh, continue worshiping with us or wherever you're connecting from. If you're from another city or some other part of the world, welcome and thank you for joining with us. We'll be back right after the Sunday announcements. Good morning and welcome to All People's Church. The vision of All People's Church is to be salt and light in the city of Bangalore, a voice to the nation of India and to the nations. We are glad to have you worshipping with us. Thank you for your generosity in supporting the work and ministry through your tithes and offerings. Please use the information available at apcwo.org slash give to give as the Lord enables you. Right after today's service, our pastoral team will be available online to pray with you one-on-one. -on -one. You can connect to this online prayer room via Zoom on zoom.us slash join or you can use the Zoom app with the meeting ID 797-185-0459 and the passcode all in caps APC 2021. Zoom meeting ID 797-185-0459 and the passcode APC 2021. Please connect to Zoom and await your turn.
well those were the announcements for more information on upcoming events do visit our church website apcwo.org here you can access the sunday sermon recordings and sermon notes download our free publications get information on life groups and much more now sit back relax and be blessed as we spend this time in god's presence I hereby publish the bans of marriage between Amos Kanakam, member of All People's Church, Bangalore, son of late Mr. Posham Kanakam and Mrs. Ramama. Amos will be getting married to Shanti Munagapati, member of Mispa Telugu Church, daughter of Mr. M R Chennaiya and Mrs. Grace Mary. This wedding is to be solemnized at Mispa Telugu Church, Bangalore, on Thursday, the twenty-third of September, at four p.m. If any of you know of any reasons as to why these two young persons should not be joined together in marriage, kindly make it known in writing to Pastor Ashish Raicho, the senior pastor of this church. This is the second time of asking. Let's pray for Amos and Shanti. Father, we thank you for Amos and Shanti. We thank you for their lives. We thank you for leading them and bringing them to this season and this point in their lives, God. We commit them both, even as they prepare themselves for the sacred union. Lord, we pray and commit both their families into your mighty hands. We pray that you would take care of all their needs, according to your riches and glory, even as they prepare themselves, God. We pray for your protection. We pray for your blessing on both uh, Shanti and Amos and their families. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. We pray. Amen. Greetings once again. And uh, as you uh, noted in our Sunday announcements, we will be resuming our in-person services next Sunday, which is September the 19th. And uh, we are really excited to be able to reopen our services. Uh, we're going to start off with our main central location uh, in uh, Good Shepherd Auditorium. We'll start up, start that off first on September 19th. And then in a couple of weeks, we will uh, open up other locations uh, somewhere in the middle of October. So we will announce that as well. So all our other locations will reopen uh, in a few weeks after that. So we want to invite uh, those of you in Bangalore and who are able to come to please join us in the in-person services. We're going to continue with uh, the safety measures and all of, uh, all of those uh, preventive measures that uh, we have been following in the past. We will have our face masks on, uh, physical distancing, and also we request those of you uh, who are coming in person to please have at least your first vaccination shot so that uh, it's for your own good and also for um, the well-being of other people. And if, you've, if you can get both your shots before that, that's excellent. But uh, at least your first shot for your own safety and for the well-being of other people. So we will do that. Our live stream will continue. So we will be coming to you live those of you who are watching online from other cities and other parts of the world, we'll continue our live streaming uh, from our main auditorium, same time at 10.30 on Sundays. Our kids' service will continue uh, online, 9 a.m. on Sundays before the main service, and that will uh, be as usual as we have been doing this far. So we're really excited, you know, it's, uh, it's just exciting to be able to transition from all of these our pre-recorded services to being back in line. And I'm excited because this is going to be the last uh, pre-recorded service that we have to do. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully we will be able to stay with the in-person services uh, for a time to come. So really excited about that. And we hope all of you are excited to be able to get back together, uh, meet in person and worship God together in person. All right. As we normally do, we're going to rise up to our feet or we're going to make our declaration. You can be seated wherever you are uh, and we are going to make our declaration. Uh, it's an expression of our faith uh, in the word of God, in God and what he has uh, done for us and uh, uh, spoken over our lives. And uh, Jesus taught us to speak our faith. He said, if you have faith, you will say. The Bible teaches us to do that. And that's why we make our declaration. And the church, when I say the church, the, the body of Christ, right from the early days, uh, or from the time of the Nicene Creed, where they stood up and they, they spoke or they declared, uh, this is what we believe. So we've just modified it or modified and created our own declaration. 
So if you've got your Bibles, I want to, hold, I want to request you to please hold your Bible uh, in your hand. And uh, let's say this out loud, bold, and strong. Let's say it like we believe it. Let's say it because we mean it. Let's say it out together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God and a servant of Christ and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word, I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master, and to him I am in absolute surrender. I walk in the more glorious covenant with God. I live the more glorious life in the spirit. I manifest the glor more glorious ministry of the spirit in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining us, joining with us in the declaration. It's good to affirm what the word of God says about us. Now, we are, we have been studying the word of God on this theme of our identity in Christ. And this is one of the foremost revelations in the New Testament. And I feel this is the most important thing a believer in Jesus Christ should know. Uh, the truth of our, this revelation of our identity in Christ. Who we are in Christ. What is our inheritance in Christ. And how to live this life in Christ. So if you ask me, what should we teach a believer? I would say this is the first thing. After you've told them, tell a believer how to read his Bible and pray. This is the first thing. Because this is so comprehensive. This is complete. This is a revelation that you find throughout the episodes. And this understanding, if a believer were to receive a revelation, an understanding of our identity in Christ and of our inheritance in Christ and how to live our life in Christ, it will address all the challenges, the issues that a believer faces in their walk of faith. It will cause every believer to walk victorious, or to walk in the blessings of God, to walk in a place of authority and dominion. And so I cannot overemphasize how important this entire series is, this entire revelation is. Now, of course, we've broken it down into bits, into, you know, several sermons so that we could cover this entire revelation that we find in the New Testament. Just to quickly recap, we started by talking about the revelation in Christ, the fact that it is there in the epistles. We talked about what it means to be new creation in Christ. And then we started unraveling our identity. We said we are we are justified and made righteous in Christ. It gives us a right standing with God. And it's, it's that, it's, that is our standing in the realm of the Spirit, people who are righteous. We said we have been uh, sanctified and made holy in Christ. So we are holy people and we live out of that, what God has done for us. We talked about our identification, our identif uh, identification with Christ and what that means for us in everyday life. It's the key to living a life that is victorious over sin, that we live free from any kind of bondage. And if you understand that, your identification with Christ, you can step into a life of victory over sin. If you live out of that place, then we talked about the spirit of life in Christ, that God has granted to us the law of the spirit of life. And because of the law of the spirit of life, we are free from the law of sin and death. We also talk about the truth of our redemption in Christ. And in Christ, we are people who are redeemed. We're going to build this up further today. And I want to talk about another important truth about our place in Christ. And it is about our freedom in Christ. That we are free in Christ. There is a place of freedom in Christ. And we want to look at specifically what this freedom means and how do we live as people who are free in Christ. So to begin with, we go to Galatians chapter 2 and we will read verses 3 and 4. In Galatians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4, Paul uh, states this. He says, Yet not even Titus who was with me, being a Greek, 
was compelled to be circumcised. And this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in, who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. So notice that phrase, in Christ Jesus. That's the phrase we are tracing through the New Testament. So we find that right here in Galatians chapter 2, verse 4, in Christ Jesus. So what is Paul saying we have in Christ Jesus? He says, our liberty, which we have, it's a present tense thing. We actually have it right now. Our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus. So I'm picking out just this one verse, but this in essence is, you know, tells us the whole motivation behind Paul's epistle to the Galatians. So uh, just to give a little background, Paul is writing this epistle to the believers in Galatia. So Galatia is a district. Uh, there are several churches in this region. Uh, Galatia typically was broken into northern Galatia and southern Galatia, uh, Galatia. Paul traveled through southern part of Galatia, which included uh, the tri-city area of uh, Lystra, Derb, Derby, and Iconium. So they are cities that are close to each other in the southern district, southern part of the district of Galatia. So he traveled through that in his first missionary journey. Now he also covered other parts of Galatia in his second and his third missionary journeys. But what happened was after Paul went and preached the gospel and many of these Gentiles came to faith in Christ, there were other Jewish believers who went through the same region after Paul had gone and started telling all these believers that it's good that they believed in Christ, but they also had to keep the law. In other words, they had to submit to Judaism. And so this confused these Gentile Christians, you know, they heard Paul saying, you know, teaching, preaching, preaching Christ to them. They believed Christ. They received the message of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ. But now they are totally confused because here come Jewish Christians from Jerusalem. But they are telling them, in addition to believing in Christ, you also have to follow the Mosaic law, keep the customs, keep the law. So they're really confused. And that's what Paul is addressing. He's saying, these brethren, they came in stealthily. That means, you know, they came in after Paul left. And what did they do? They came to, you know, disrupt the liberty, the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus. And so this whole epistle of Paul to the Galatians is to help them understand that when you become a believer in Jesus Christ, you are free from the bondage to the law, that you don't have to keep the law. When I say the law, I mean the Mosaic law, the Ten Commandments and all the other ceremonial laws that accompanied that, the community laws and the ceremonial laws. All of that we are free from. Now, I know suddenly some, somebody's probably raising their hand and saying, excuse me, you're telling me we don't have to keep the Ten Commandments. Well, we'll come to that. We have something much higher than the Ten Commandments. We have the law of love, and we will come to that. But stay with me as we progress. So Paul is telling them we are free from the law. The law means everything. The law of Moses, Ten Commandments, the ceremonial law, the community laws, the hygiene laws, everything that you find in the Old Testament uh, that was given to them. He says we are free from all of that. And so we have liberty. And he breaks this down, and we find that not only in the epistle to the Galatians, we find him, him mentioning about this also in Colossians. So let's, let's talk about this, our liberty in Christ Jesus. And that's what we want to talk about in the message today, the liberty that you and I have in Christ Jesus. And probably verse 16, Galatians 2 verse 16, sums this up, what Paul is trying to get at. He says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Christ. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified, justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. Verse 16 kind of sums up the essence of what he's writing in this episode to the believers in Galatia. He's saying, look, by the works of the law, 
That means by keeping any of the law, whether it's the Ten Commandments or the ceremonial laws or the, uh, you know, the sacrificial laws, whatever, by keeping any part of it, you're not going to be justified. You and I are justified simply by faith in Christ. And we've talked about this in our previous message on the fact that you and I are justified by faith in Christ. And so Paul is emphasizing that here. And so he writes to these believers in Galatia, Galatia, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, he says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage, with the yoke of bondage. So he's referring to the law as a yoke of bondage. So you and I must understand, as believers, we are free from the yoke of the law, the Old Testament law, the yoke of bondage. And I'll just, I'm just picking up some verses because we don't have time to look at all that he states here. In uh, Galatians 5, verse 4, he says, you know, you have become estranged from Christ. You attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. So if you're trying to get righteousness by keeping the law, then grace is of no use to you. You're fallen from grace. Then he, he says this in verse 6, for in Christ Jesus, Galatians 5 verse 6, notice that phrase again, in Christ Jesus. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. Now circumcision really is, 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 the, is to epitomize the keeping of the law. So he says, look, it doesn't mean anything, but faith which works through love. What really matters in Christ is faith working through lo love. So the first thing you and I must understand is that we are free from keeping the law. So how does that apply to you and me today? You know, sometimes we find people who will take up something in the Old Testament, something that is, you know, under the law of Moses and preach it hard to us and say, you shouldn't do this, you know. And you may have heard this, you know, uh, the Old Testament law says that uh, ladies should not wear men's clothing. Now, trousers, you know, uh, we find men and women wearing that. But somebody can take that script from the Old Testament law, bang it hard on people today and say, hey, you've got to keep that or something like that. There are so many other things that can be pulled out and, and, and hit hard. But you understand, we, don't, we are not sub subject to the law. We live by something different. What do we as New Testament believers live by? We live by the Spirit, are being led by the Spirit, and we choose, we are, we are here to walk in love. So we walk in the spirit and we walk in love. And let's just give some scripture to that. Galatians 5.18, Paul writes in that same epistle, he says, if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law, period. If you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. If somebody asks you, why are you not following the law? Because the Bible says in Galatians 5.18, if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. I am, I have liberty in Christ. And my liberty says, if I am led by the Holy Spirit, I am not under the law. So I walk according to the Spirit. And if, I, if you walk according to the Spirit, what happens? The Holy Spirit is going to help you do much more than what the law requires. Also, you and I, we walk in love. And Paul writes in Romans 13, verse 8 and 10, he says, He who loves another, has fulfilled the law. And verse 10, he says, love is a fulfillment of the law. Now, words, if you walk in love, you're going to keep all of the law. So if you and I are led by the Holy Spirit and we are walking in love, we do much more than the, what the law requires. You see, the law of liberty is much greater than the law of Moses. You and I are under the law of liberty. Under the law of Moses, the instruction was, thou shalt not commit adultery. Under the New Testament, the law of liberty says, even you don't even look at a woman with a lustful eye. The law of liberty is much higher, has a much higher standard than the law of Moses. In the law of Moses, it said, don't, you, you shouldn't commit murder. The New Testament, the law of liberty says, you shouldn't hate your brother. Because even if you hate a bro your brother, you are a murderer. So the law that you and I are subject to is much higher than the law of Moses. And the only way you and I can walk in the perfect law of liberty is by walking in the Spirit and by walking in love. And both come from God. God empowers us to walk in the Spirit 
God empowers us to walk in love. So if you and I are led by the Spirit, and walk in the Spirit, and walk in love, we do much more than the law of Moses. So you and I are free from the law of Moses, from the Mosaic law. So don't let somebody take scripture from the Old Testament, from the Mosaic law, and beat you down with it. Just understand, you're living by the Spirit, and you're walking in love. Secondly, in relation to the same thing, we are free from worthless rituals. And Paul writes about this in Galatians chapter 4, verses 6 through 11. I'm just going to pick out a few verses just to keep this sermon brief. You know, he says there in Galatians chapter 4, verses 6 through 11, he says, look, we are sons of God, sons and daughters of God. And then he says in verse 9 and 10 and 11, he says, now after you've known God, or rather known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I'm afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. So this observance of days and months and seasons and years, these are rituals. And he says, why are you doing that? Why are you going back into bondage once again? Why? You are free. You are now a son, a daughter of God in Christ. And why are you making yourself a slave to these weak and worthless rituals? He calls them weak and beggarly elements. Why are you making yourself a slave to it when you are free as a son and a daughter of God? And now, how does that apply to you and me today? You see, today, there can be so many customs which are weak and beggarly rituals that sometimes uh, in the church context, people expect you to keep, you know, whether it's uh, these 40 days of Lent or whether it's other days throughout the year, you observe this day, you observe that day. Sometimes these customs can come from the cultures that we are part of. And we are all expected to keep it. And Paul is saying, look, you're free from those things. Now, if you want to do it, you do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. We are not in bondage to it. It doesn't change who you are. You are a son of God. You're a daughter of God in Christ Jesus. You have liberty in Christ. Now, if you want to do something, you do it. If you want to spend a day and say, God, this is my, you know, if Thursday is a, is a, it is a day when you want to take time off to worship God, worship God on Thursday. Somebody else prefers Friday, okay, they do it on Friday. Somebody else prefers Tuesday, it's okay, they do it on Tuesday, whatever. But you don't have to bring yourself in bondage and you don't have to let somebody else put you in bondage to observing days and months, seasons and years. So we are free from these kind of worthless rituals that we are compelled to keep. Stay in your freedom. Another important aspect of our freedom, and called Paul brings it out, brings this out in Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 to 23, is that we are free from man-made ideas. Now it's a long passage here, Colossians 2, 16 to 23. And I'll just again pick out a few verses here. He says in verse 16: So let no one judge you in food or in drink, or regarding a festival, or a new moon, or Sabbaths which are shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Verse 18, let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into things which he, he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. So in a sense, you and I are free from man-made ideas. So sometimes these ideas are inside the church context. People say, you know, don't eat this, don't eat that. Observe this day, observe that day, observe this festival, observe that festival. And he says, look, we are free from these man-made things. Or they may say, you know, an angel visited, visited us, or I had a vision of an angel, or I had a vision of, you know, heaven, whatever, and therefore do this, and therefore don't do this. Listen, if somebody had a vision of an angel and the angel told them what to do, it's okay for them, but you don't have to put that on me. And I'm not going to follow your vision of an angel. Somebody may have, a, may have had a visitation from Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ may have told him or her to do something, but that does not apply to me. I'm going to follow the Bible. I'm going to follow the Word of God. 
not somebody else's angelic visitation, not somebody else's personal encounter with Jesus. My life is not defined by that. My life is defined by the word of God. And I want to tell you, Paul says here, don't let any person dictate such things to you. And it is very sad, especially in, you know, the spiritual uh, supernatural community where one person has a vision and they push it off on everybody else. Now we judge others who try to push their, you know, uh, ideas of food and drink, but we are so susceptible to somebody else's visitation of an angel or somebody else's prophetic experience or somebody else's dream or somebody else's encounter with Jesus. And we let that control us. You ask somebody, why are you doing this? And they say, because I heard so-and-so say a vision, an angel came and told them to do this. Is it in the Bible? It's not in the Bible. But they have submitted themselves to somebody else's angelic encounter, to somebody else's prophetic experience. And Paul says, don't let anybody do that to you. And so I'm coming strong on this. I will not accept, and I encourage you not to accept any prophet, any person who says God spoke to him or her, or they went to heaven, they did this, they did that, and God gave him this word. It's good for them. It's not good for me. For me, I'm following the written scriptures. We live by the written scriptures, and that's what we're going to abide by, not by somebody else's visitation or encounter with Jesus Christ. So whether it is in the observance of food and drink and festival and new moon and Sabbaths, or whether it is in somebody else's encounter with angels or any other spiritual experience, do not let somebody's experience or ideas hold you in bondage. Paul is saying, do not subject yourself to such things because you are free. You are free in Christ. If they want to submit themselves to it, it's up to them. But you and I live by the written word of God not by somebody else's man-made idea of spiritual things. So, in connection to this, I would also address the issue of superstitions. You see, we are believers, and somehow as believers, uh, 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 sometimes we submit ourselves to cultural superstitions. And, uh, you know, uh, just depending on which part of the country you are from, there are all these different kinds of superstitions, you know. Uh, for example, I remember in those early days, I used to hear these things. You know, if you go out in a car and a black cat crosses the car from maybe left to right, it's a bad day, turn back, go back. I mean, that's, uh, that's a superstition. And sad to say, you see believers submitting to something like that. So they turn the car back and go. And you say, what happened to your faith in God? Why are you letting a black cat that crosses your road, the path in front of you, dictate your life? It's a superstition. And we are not submitted to such man-made ideas. Or like that, there could be so many other things that are cultural superstitions. And I want us to understand, we are not subject to those things. In Christ, we will not let anyone control us in such matters. So whether it's in what you eat, drink, and observe, whether it's in spiritual things or visions, dreams, encounters, visitations, or whether it's in cultural superstitions, don't let any of these things be put upon you and hold you in bondage because you have freedom in Christ. So what are we supposed to do with this truth? Uh, how do we live this out practically? And this is somewhere I want, us to, I want you to pay close attention because sometimes, especially in our world today, where there's so much of thinking going on, there is a misunderstanding of what freedom is. I want to help us understand certain things about freedom given to us in the Bible. First of all, we are to stand firm in our freedom. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, Paul says, Stand firm in the liberty by which Christ has made you free. In other words, Jesus has brought you into this place of freedom. where You are a son and a daughter of God. You're not subject to the law. You're not subject to worthless rituals. And you're not subject to man-made ideas. What man presents. You and I are subject to the perfect law of liberty, which is the word of God. We live by the word of God. And we live by the Holy Spirit, his leading in our lives. So stand firm in this liberty and don't come into bondage to any of these things. That's the first thing. But in the same episode, Paul tells us, don't misuse your freedom. 
Don't misuse your freedom. Look at this in Galatians 5, verse 13 and 14. He says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty only. Do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So he says, brothers, you've been called to freedom. Perfect. Wonderful. That's the whole point of Galatians. He's writing to it, writing uh, to the Galatians about freedom. But he says, don't use your freedom to gratify your flesh, your fleshly desires. And he lists, talks about what fleshly desires. There's pride. There is strife. There is hatred. These are expressions of the flesh. So if somebody is saying, I'm walking in freedom, but they are ending up hurting somebody, fighting with people, he says, that's the flesh. He says, don't use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But instead, he says, through love, serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And this is where I think there is such a misunderstanding of freedom. Let me say this. Walking in love towards others overrides walking in your freedom. Is what Paul is saying. Walking in love towards others is more important than walking in your freedom. So we have freedom, yes. But he said there's something more important. What is it? It's to walk in love. So you want to exercise your freedom, but the exercise of your freedom is subject to loving one another, uh, loving your neighbor as you love yourself. So that means my freedom ends where my love for my neighbor, my concern for my neighbor begins. So my love for my neighbor supersedes my exercise of my freedom. Paul teaches us in Galatians 5, 13 and 14. Another important aspect of walking in freedom is this, that walking in honor towards others overrides your walking in freedom. That means the exercise of your freedom ends and honor for somebody else begins. So Paul says, our honor for people. In Romans 13 verse 7, he says, Render therefore to all honor to whom honor. So we honor people. In 1 Peter 2.17, he says, Honor all people. Peter writes, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. So honor leadership, honor all people. So my freedom ends where my honor, my respect for somebody else begins. You honor your spiritual leaders. You honor leaders in government authority. You honor your, uh, your bosses in the workplace. Paul teaches us that in Ephesians 6 and Colossians 3. He says, you know, employees... Honor your, your masters. So we have freedom. But freedom ends where honor begins. And people need to understand that. In my freedom, I cannot walk in disrespect to God-appointed authority. No. And I'll just give you a very simple example. This happened many, many years ago. Uh, I think it was in 92 or 93 maybe. And I had gone to the southern part of India. Uh, preaching in those days. And I'd, I was invited to preach in a, I'd gone to preach in a certain church, a uh, Pentecostal church. And uh, we arrived that morning and the, you know, the conference was supposed to start at 10 o'clock. We just arrived maybe two hours before that. We went there and freshened up, ready for the conference. I walked into the church to the side and the, uh, the, uh, the person in charge, they didn't call them pastors, they called them something else. But he took me aside and he said, you know, uh, Brother, uh, you know, in this church, we don't wear jewelry. And you're wearing a belt. And the belt buckle is gold color. Something like what I'm wearing right now. He said, you know, if you have to go inside the church, you have to take it off. Now, I had a choice, obviously. I could say, no, I want to wear my belt with the gold buckle. And it wasn't gold, it was just gold color. Or I could say, look, I'll take it off. I'll honor you. And so for me, immediately, there was no problem. I just took it off, left it there, said, hey, I'm ready to go. We are there for three days. So for three days, you know, I think about five times a day, five sessions a day, preached without the belt. No problem. Not an issue. Why? I have liberty, but I submit my, I end my liberty where the honor for the other congregation begins. 
Now, after those three days, I wore my belt and left the place. Doesn't matter. But while I'm there, I submitted myself to something that they felt was important to me. I didn't, I didn't subscribe to that idea. But what was more important? Serving them was more important than wearing a belt. Serving them with the word of God. And in that me, in those three days, we had wonderful healings and miracles and people were healed and, uh, and ministered to in the word of God. So it was a wonderful time. But it all began with, you need to take off your belt if you're going to speak here. Simple thing. But believers don't understand the simplicity of freedom. That your freedom ends where the love for the other person begins. Your freedom ends where honor for the other person begins. And lastly, keep, in, keep this in mind. Your freedom ends where the well-being of another person begins. The well-being. If your freedom is going to hurt somebody else, you're abusing, you're misusing your freedom. So what do you mean? Paul writes about this in Romans, the 14th chapter. And again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, he writes to believers. He's saying, look, if you're going to eat something that's going to hurt a younger brother, don't eat it. I would not eat it, Paul says. He's talking about food in both these places, Romans 14 and also in 1 Corinthians 8. And he says, if I eat something that's going to offend another brother, I will not. He says, I could eat it if I wanted to. But because it will cause an offense, I won't eat. That means I have freedom. But my freedom ends where the well-being of the other person begins. So if I'm going to do something in the name of freedom, in the name of faith, in the name of whatever. But if it's going to hurt somebody else, my freedom stops right there. Because my concern is more for their well-being than for the expression of my freedom. And so I want us as believers to understand we have complete freedom in Jesus Christ. Nothing can take, a, take that away. I'm free in my spirit. So these outward things don't matter. You tell me to wear a belt, I'll wear it. You tell me to take it off, I'll take it off. It doesn't matter. Some places have had to go to preach. They say you have to wear this white robe to preach. Hey, I'll wear it and preach. It doesn't matter to me. Some places I go, you say, take off your belt, take off your shoes. I'll do it. It doesn't matter to me because I am free in my spirit. And these external things, what I wear and what I don't have to wear, doesn't matter because love supersedes my freedom. Honor for the other person, or honor for that community that I'm going to serve supersedes it. Uh, the, their well-being supersedes the expression of our freedom. So I want you to get a correct understanding, a biblical understanding of how to walk in the liberty that we have in Christ. We have liberty. You're always free in your spirit. Nothing can hold you in bondage. Don't stand fast in that liberty and don't submit yourself to either the, the Old Testament, the law, or a worthless rituals or man-made ideas. But also understand and in all of these things that in the expression of your liberty, do it in love. Do it with honor to the other person and do it with their well-being as foremost in your mind. Then we'll walk in the liberty that we have in Christ Jesus. There are many scriptures on these things and just for the sake of brevity, I haven't quoted all those scriptures, but you will find them in the sermon notes. You're welcome to go ahead and, and review that. So to sum up, you and I are free from bondage to the law. We are free from worthless rituals. We are free from man-made ideas and however that those ideas may be expressed. But we must stand firm in our freedom. We must not use, misuse our freedom. We must use our freedom wisely. Today, if you've been listening and perhaps you have in one of these areas that I've spoken about today, you find that you, you need to correct yourself. Do it. Come into alignment with the word of God today and God will bless us for honoring his word. We're going to let the worship team lead us in a few moments of worship. We'll be back. We'll pray a simple prayer together. And may the Lord bring freedom to you. May you understand what freedom truly is as we walk in the Spirit and as we walk in love. May you receive wisdom how to walk perfectly in the liberty that Christ has given to us without abusing it, without misusing it, without wrongly interpreting what liberty in Christ is. May that wisdom be granted to you. 
I just want to speak the name of Jesus And over every heart and every mind And I know there is peace within your presence And I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like fire. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety To every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak your holy name Jesus
Thank you, worship team. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time in your word. And Father, I pray for people listening, God. If they have in some way been subject to bondage, whether it's the law, whether it's worthless rituals, whether it's man-made ideas, Lord, in the form of uh, superstitions, cultural superstitions, or whether it's in the form of observing uh, food and drink and days and festivals, or whether even if it's in the form of super uh, natural encounters that, that people have submitted themselves to uh, rather than living by the word. Today, let there be freedom. Let there be an alignment, a coming into alignment, God. Let there be a correction, a, a sifting out of what is wrong. And let there be an alignment in our hearts and lives. Let people come into alignment to your truths, Father. And I also pray, God, for wisdom to be released to people, especially in times that we are living in when there is so much a misunderstanding of liberty, a misunderstanding of freedom. Father, today, let every person hearing this message receive wisdom to understand what liberty is really about in Christ. And choose to walk in love, choose to walk in honor, and choose to walk in the well-being of the other person. Put that first. I pray this wisdom be imparted, God. And let the Holy Spirit do this work, I pray. Now, thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye.
better 